So why did the two podiatrists hate each other? Because they were arch enemies. back pod squad i'm diksha a third year podiatry resident training to be a foot and ankle surgeon so welcome back to the series of exploring the podiatric medical schools there are two additional ones one of them today that we'll be discussing about will be the lecom podiatry school and joining us today will be bridge patel he's part of the inaugural class thank you bridge patel for your time and your efforts and for kindly doing this for us hit it thank you so much doctors diksha and yona for having me on your channel today my name is bridge patel and i'm a second year podiatric medical student at the lake erie college of osteopathic medicine school of podiatric medicine abbreviated as lecom spm um, and today i'll be answering some common questions that prospective students may have regarding the school i attend so with that being said let's dive uh, right into it the area is beautiful i would say um, it's a residential style suburban area with a population of about, about ninety four thousand. I'd say my favorite part of the city is being near Presque Isle. Uh, Presque Isle is the Lake Erie, as you guys know. It surrounds it, and there's a bunch of beaches. I think there's about 15 or so, maybe even more, beaches that you can go to and observe jet skiing, fishing. Uh, there's even just like sand, little waves that come and go. It's, it's, it's just a nice area as a whole. It's really fun to go out with some friends over the nice days. Granted, in Erie it does snow a lot, so the winter days you probably won't be going down there as much. Erie is safe uh, in regards to safety. Uh, there's no troubles at all that I've had or any of my friends have had that I've spoken to. For food, there are both local and chain restaurants. You'll get the common ones such as Olive Garden, Cheddar's, whatever it may be. Um, but the local ones, like a, there's a restaurant I know called Amigos. Very good burritos. Uh, perfect quantity. We all know we love food, so yeah, you, there, there are no problems with food in Erie, and uh, there's food for everyone's liking. Erie has a lot of snow, but in the recent years I've heard from people, I mean, I've only been there for a year, but other people have said it has slowed down a little, and I don't know what that's from, but it still is a lot. There will be three, four days at a time where it's just going to be snowing, and it will pile and pile up, but Erie is good in regards to their transportation services, and they do clean the snow, and it's not usually a problem uh, getting to classes. And I'll speak more about the apartments and what's that like, if it's close or not. And people usually don't have a problem getting to class and stuff like that. I would recommend, though, you do have a four-wheel car if you do uh, attend Lecom SPM. Well, housing in Erie has a wide range in terms of pricing. You can go anywhere from about, I've seen the lowest in the 500s, to anywhere as expensive as $1,400. And this depends on what you're looking for, right? Uh, on the cheaper end, you can pr probably buy a house and split it with some roommates, which will end up costing you less because that's just how it is. Um, if you are willing to pay 1400 then you're going to have a full-size outdoor pool and a gym as well and nice stainless steel appliances and stuff like that. So essentially there's, and these are all around the school itself. So whatever you're heart may desire, whatever you're looking for, it is achievable and findable in the Erie area. In terms of the most popular apartments, I currently live at Laurel Springs, which is right across the street from the north uh, main building. That's usually where the pharmacy and the osteopathic medical students are. As podiatric medical students, we're in the west building, so it's a little bit uh, down of a walk, but the drive would be one to two minutes max. And in the winter, it's not bad at all. They clean the roads, the driveways, everything, parking lots, and it's all taken care of. And there's other apartments around the hammocks. I know the Mileno apartments, which a couple of students are going to be living at. And there's independent housing as well, which shouldn't be too hard to find. There's also realtors, which can help you uh, get through that as well. Uh, grocery stores, there are the mainstream ones. Uh, as you guys know, there's Giant Eagle, Wegmans, Walmart. There's Tops, Aldi, and even Target. So grocery shopping is not a problem at all, and it's tailored to individual likability and whatever you want, would like to buy. Um, since I was part of the inaugural class, they kept the class size uh, to a maximum of 40, but we had about 21. And they're going to increase that class size as more classes come in to, uh, I think, 40 for the next year, and then 40 for third and fourth, and then maybe increase it as my cohort graduates. We are a semester-based system. We have semester one, semester two, uh, 
And within those semesters, the first semester is uh, is a lot, especially coming out of undergrad or if you take a couple gap years. The workload is, it speaks volume, but the class that we took first semester included anatomy, embryology, foundations of podiatric medicine, histology, history and physical, where you learned uh, how to take vital signs, the blood pressure, heart, lungs, microbiology, immunology, which was paired in as one class, and then physiology. And there also was uh, biostatistics as well. So I know it does seem like a lot, but <clears throat> a lot of the classes are integratable, and it does essentially come in as a whole. Um, and then second semester, you're going to start off with taking biochemistry 2, pathology, and then dive right into healthcare management, human sexuality, history and physical 2, which is where you learn some more of the foot and ankle and other orthopedic-related MSK, um, history and physical vital signs. Um, there's going to be MSK, musculoskeletal, basic neuroscience, and clinical science. And then for our podiatric-specific courses, you'll be taking OR protocols, which you'll receive a certificate um, that you are adequate in performing the scrubbing techniques to get into the operating room. So there are tons of research opportunities with a lot of the faculty. And the great thing about being integrated with an osteopathic medical school is that we can do research with them as well. Um, I know the anatomy clinical uh, director and faculty have been working with some of the DPM students to integrate lower extremity foot and ankle cases into their research and have some of our students working with them as well. Um, so there's PhDs, DOs, and DPMs. Uh, all the interprofessionalism uh, stays very true at this school, and it's a great part of attending a school that is conjoined with a, a DO school. We don't have a podiatry-specific research lab yet, and I do hope in the near future that we do get one, but there's a bunch of research through the residency programs, and they're willing to work with the medical students, uh, which are us, and it, it does work out. So if you were looking to research, you will find it. There's a bunch of opportunities, and we are always here to help you if you're looking more into that. Since we are the inaugural class, we have had the opportunity, um, I am the class representative, so I had the opportunity of creating the Constitution and bylaws, and I've been blessed with the opportunity to also help uh, create these two clubs. So we start off with the APMSA, which is the American Podiatric Medical Student Association, and ACFAS, which is the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgery, and that's going to be our student chapter that we're going to create. And there's going to be different various events throughout these. Um, in ACFAS, we'll hold suturing labs and this and that, suturing kits, and well, there's just going to be tons of activities that, that you guys will get your hands on. And another thing, as I was speaking previously about being conjoined with the DO school, we have the opportunity of joining their clubs as well. So personally, I'm part of the American College of Osteopathic Surgery and the Orthopedic Club, and I got to learn some of the suturing, uh, early on suturing, uh, like skill sets from them. They also do casting clinics and a bunch of things that are tailored to our profession. So that, that's a beautiful sight to see. And we're going to get more clubs as our student body grows. As more people come in, we can, we can open up more clubs and be more involved. So we have a state-of-the-art LECOM Medical Fitness and Wellness Center, which is absolutely beautiful. I mean, there's pickleball, there's a basketball court, racquetball courts, there's a cycle studios, Zen garden, there's yoga classes, there's cardio equipment, the weightlifting. It's, it's, it's awesome and absolutely I love going there. It's, it's a great time to get away from classes and just, you know, get that pump going. There is student career counseling that's offered. Um, and we have the students will be there to help and answer any questions. But for specific academic support services, there's more tutoring that it's offered through, I know the DOs were tutoring uh, SPM faculty since the classes are pretty much similar, but now since we are the first cohort and we went through, we're going to be offering our own tutoring services as well. Um, and our Dean of Preclinical Education is always on top of everything and she, uh, she'll be most willing to help every single student uh, succeed. So students do have access to the LECOM Behavioral Institute, uh, the Institute for Behavioral Health, sorry, I apologize. And this is the best resource if uh, any student were in need of uh, counseling. I'd say my favorite part about being in school is the people that I've met. Um, I didn't expect coming into school with such a small class size that I would find the friends that I did. But all of us are so ready to help one another. Uh, we, we enjoy each other's company. We like to you know go out 
I explore the lake. I've gone fly fishing. Some of these friends have taught me how to fish. So, I mean, there's tons of activities to do with your friends. And no matter how big or small your class size is, you always find those people that you connect with. And that, that's what I love about being in school over here. Does the school have a special group to help spouses or family members for acclimating to medical school? As of now, I do not believe there's anything like that on the school of podiatric medical side, but maybe the osteopathic students do have something like that. And we, if we don't, then we will work to get that as well. So I'm sure there is something, and you can always talk to the, the dean and uh, the preclinical dean for of education, and they'll be willing to help on how to accommodate all that as well. So yeah, there are different uh, scholarships that are sent out to all the medical students, and the SPM students usually uh, there are there are scholarships that are specific towards us as well. And there will be scholarships through the clubs that we create, too. I know APMSA gives out uh, scholarships to specific students, and ACFAS will provide scholarships to students who present poster boards and this and that at their annual conferences. I believe the next one is in uh, Arizona, and it changes every year. So there are, there are plenty of opportunities for scholarships. I do, there are buses that I've seen public transportation, but since you're going to school most of the time, uh, I think a car would be reliable. I would say if you want to get to the grocery store or even the mall, it's, the walking is not feasible, especially during the winter months. I would recommend a four-wheel drive car uh, that would best suit your needs. Um, it, the cost of living is relatively cheap, so it would be manageable. There's enough parking. It's not like downtown where you got to squeeze in and parallel park all the time. I mean, there are some houses down there, granted, but if you were to live in the more, more residential areas, there's not a problem with parking or anything. The school has plenty of parking and it's free. There's nothing like that. Um, and like Laurel Springs, the apartment I live, that's walking distance. So on a nice summer day or spring or fall, I'll just go ahead and walk down to class. Are there any jobs that students can take as first years in school, such as peer tutors or note takers? So as of now, I do not believe that is offered on our side of things. But I do know there are summer jobs where students can work with cadavers and prep them for the incoming classes. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a job outside of what they were to offer over the summer per se because the class load is intense and you're you're going to be working a lot of hours in and out, especially during school, trying to get everything together, and then after hours, you know whether it's studying for homework, uh, I mean studying for exams or just doing homework. So I know anatomy, uh, the cadaver labs were open as long as the main building was open, which runs till 12 a.m. and this was really important to go in, especially for your practicals early on, the anatomy practicals. You go in and, you know, walk around and try to identify what's what's going on, whether it innervates, second order questions, and this and that. So it's very important to get that practice in. And it's really nice that it was open till the, the actual school closed. But the main campus is open from 6 a.m. to midnight on weekdays and then 8 a.m. to midnight on uh, weekends. Our gym is open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then Sunday it's closed. But these, and there's other gyms around too. If these hours are not, in, uh, don't work with your schedule, there are many other gyms. There's Crunch Fitness, Planet Fitness. And I think uh, there's some other local gyms. There's a bunch of yoga classes that are offered. So to, there's opportunity for everyone. So we do have special ties with our, uh, the podiatric medicine and surgery residency here at LECOM. And the director is also a faculty member for the School of Podiatric Medicine, the residency director. So he's given a few lectures and stuff like that. And so... Everyone's intertwined. Uh, residents would also are willing. I know a lot of our students are doing research with the residents as well. So there's that mentorship. Uh, the students were assigned mentors who are the residents, and they're ready to answer any questions and really, really helpful in the whole process of what it's like to be a podiatric medical student and how to succeed in the early on preclinical education years. Even rotations they'll give advice on. I'd say if you're looking for a school where you know you want to be prepared for boards, and you like the sense of interprofessionalism where you're ready to connect with osteopathic medical students, I value that a lot. I think I've learned a lot from my DO peers and my SPM faculty and SPM uh, student body. But having that interprofessionalism really spoke volume to me early on. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. There's a lot 
to be learned and there's a lot that's already been learned and we look forward to the next step and if you were to attend this school you can always reach out to me even if I'm graduated and moved on I'm always here to help so with that being said uh, thank you for your time